Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 20 and in this video we're going to take a first look at functions. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, what the hell is a function? Well, when you write lots of code, when you get better at JavaScript, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And pretty soon it's going to get messy. You don't know which code is where, you don't know which parts of the code are performing which actions, etc. Hard to update. Now, this is where functions step in. Essentially, functions group logical sections of code together so that you can call that section of code whenever you want to, all right? And it will perform those actions for you. For example, we could have a function that works out the average of some numbers for you and returns the answer. Or you could have a function which goes onto your web page, finds all the links, and performs some kind of animation on them. Okay? So we can have all different kinds of functions which group our code together in logical sections, and then we call those functions later on when we want to run that code. Makes sense, yeah? Okay, so let's write one. Now, the first thing we need to do is specify that we're going to write a function, and to do that, we have to write the keyword function. And that's saying, hey, whatever's coming up now is a function. Next thing we need to do is write a name for this function, and the same naming rules apply uh, to functions as the variable naming rules. Okay, so we can have numbers, letters, dollar sign, underscores. We can't have a number at the beginning, but uh, the rest we can do. I'm going to call this get average. All right, so that's the name of my function. Next thing we need to do is write some parentheses. Now, these parentheses can be empty. However, if we're passing variables or values into this function, for example, I will be doing in this get average function because I'm going to be passing in some values to work out the average from, then we specify those variables, those local variables in these brackets. So I'll just call these A and B, okay? And then we can use A and B within the function. The next thing I've done just now is write these curly braces, and this is the code block. This is where we're going to write the code that is executed every time we call this function. All right? So, to work out the average is pretty simple. We'll first of all create a variable called average, and this is where it's going to store the, um, the number average. No, we'll just call it average. And we'll say is a plus b, we'll put those in parentheses because we want that addition to be worked out first, and then divide it by two, okay? Dead simple. All it's doing is taking this variable here, adding it to this variable, and then dividing it by two, then storing the result in this variable called average that we've created, all right? And what we'll do is console.log average. So whatever we work out, being stored in this variable, then we're going to log that variable to the console, all right? But that's not going to run on its own. For this code to run, we have to call it. And the way we call it is by just writing the function name. So it's called get average, and it's actually popped up here in IntelliSense because it recognizes that we've already created this function, so I'll just click there. And then we have to write the curly, uh, not the curly braces, the parentheses to call it and then put our semicolon at the end, because this is a statement. We always end statements with semicolons, remember. Now, if this function didn't take any values, if it was like that, then this would be fine. But because it does take values, it takes two values, A and B, then we have to specify those here. Now, I want to get the average of, I don't know, 7 and 12. Okay, so that's the way I pass them through. The first one, when we call get average, is going to be assigned to A. And the second number is going to be assigned to B. So this is going to be 7, A, and this is going to be 12. So 7 plus 12 is 19, divided by 2 is going to be 9.5. That's the average, right? So we're going to log that to the console. So let's save this now and run it in a browser. And now we can see it's logging this 9.5, the answer, to the console. All right, so what happens if we don't give these? Well, let's give it a whirl. We'll save that and refresh it. And now we get this NAN, which we've seen before, and it's saying the result is not a number. Because these are not going to be numbers because we've not passed them into here. And so the outcome is not going to be a number either. 
So we have to pass these variables in. What happens if we pass three in? Seven, eight, and nine. Let's work that out. Save that and refresh. Now it still gives us an answer, which is 7.5. And if we times that by two, that's 15. So it must have taken in these two numbers because seven plus eight is 15. So essentially, when you're passing in additional numbers, anything additional at the end is ignored, okay? Seven will be assigned to A, eight will be assigned to B, but this nine, because it's not needed, is gonna be ignored. All right then? So that is how we write functions. And now this might look a little bit similar to some other things we've done in the past. I'll just re refresh your memory. If we write alert, hello, this is the same format. This here is a built-in function of JavaScript. So we're calling that function and then we're passing in the value of hello, okay? Because the alert function might look something like this. Function alert string, that will be the variable name. And then it's gonna do some code here, which is gonna make a pop-up appear on your web page, which is gonna print out this string, okay? So it's the same as all the inbuilt functions that you see in JavaScript. Right, now functions can also return a value. This value here is being stored in a variable, and then we're just logging that value to the console, right? Now, if we wanted to store this value here in an external variable, let's get rid of this nine. Let's say, for example, var my result equals get average, then we'd have to return a value. Okay, so we'll return average. So what's happening here is we're saying, okay, we want a new variable, call it my result, and we're gonna set that variable to equal whatever the result of this is. Okay, whatever the return value of this is. So we're gonna call this function, it's gonna pass in these two numbers, A and B, work out the average of them, it's gonna log the average to the console, but then it's also gonna return this average variable. So this average variable is being returned here, and it's gonna set the number to be equal to my result, okay? So then when we call my result, let's just console.log, and we'll say, the average is, and then we'll concatenate my result. That is gonna print out to the console the result of this. All right, so let's save it and refresh over here. Yep, the average is 7.5. So it's returned the value here, stored that in my result, and then we've, consoled, uh, we've logged that to the console right here. All right, so then, what if we want to pass in more values? Well, we can pass it in as many as we want. We could say B, C, D, E, F, etc., etc. Okay, and we could give those in here. We could say 9, 10, 11, and 12. Let's just save that and it will still work out the average. Oops, this is 100 here. We meant to do 11. Save it and refresh. Um, have we saved it? A, oh, that's why, A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Okay, and we wanna divide it now by one, two, three, four, five, six, because that would be the average. Let's refresh, and now we get an average of 9.5. All right then, guys, so that is the uh, functions in a nutshell. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to comment down below. I know this is quite a complex concept at first, so yeah, ask ahead. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, or subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're gonna look at variable scope. I'll see you guys then.